So, how many of you would like to own a handmade Persian carpet? Can you least... Oh, that's pretty good. It's a relief to know that most of the room really is interested in the subject. So, my name is Mushtaq Hussein. I was born in Kabul, Afghanistan in 77. When I was about two years old, Russian invasion happened in my country. As a result, we emigrated to northeast of Iran, where we spent about nine years of our life as a refugee. Most of the time, in the afternoons after school, I was weaving carpet with the refugee kids and the other tribal weavers. Until 80, 89, where my father decided that it's a time for us to move, so he brought us with Kuwait. Unfortunately, just a few months after we arrived, there was another invasion here. And we had lost everything once again. This time, me and my brother Ali, by now 13, me and Ali 15, start helping my dad on selling carpets for the next following years. So, until 1997, which was a turning point in my life. This year, I had finished school and was getting ready to go to UTS University to continue my education and career in Sydney, Australia. In one hand, everyone I knew had advised me to take this step. On the other hand, I had love of carpets in my heart. The years of weaving the carpet with the refugee kids and the years of selling them in Kuwait had done its job on me. It made me fall in love with these beautiful pieces of art. I just loved going back to the tribe and watching them being made. The crazy that this may sound, I even loved the sound of the brush heading on a pile, especially when it came to the Turkmen tribe, where I was told that when there are more than a weaver in a loom, they make sure they never hit the brush at the same time, trying from them to create the sound of the horse steps. For the Turkmen's horse symbolizes nobility and honor, and by hitting them that way, they're trying to show us their love and appreciation to their handmade pieces of carpet by them and their weavers. A friend of mine kept telling me, Hussein, can you make during your talk the sound of the horse steps? I kept thinking, late last night it came in my mind. I said, well, what the heck, I will do it for him. This is for you, Ben. So when there are two weavers in a loom, normally the sound becomes can you hear it? So when they hit them, if it's one weaver, you're going to have a, a single head. But when there are two, it literally makes that sound step. Now if we have three weavers, this rhythm is the sound that they are trying to achieve in a Turkmen tribe for us to see and hear and believe and trust them and love their uh, uh, items. I also loved watching them dye the wool from pomegranate skeins, madder root, indigo leaves. Excuse me. What I was intrigued the most, though, was the time that took for these beautiful pieces of art to be made. Usually months. Sometimes years takes for one piece of a carpet to be made. As a teenager, I was wondering what motivated someone to spend such a long time on a loom and never get bored or tired of it. So finally, years after that, I got my answer. When I started weaving a carpet for my own daughter's birthday, and I, I had spent something about five to six hours a day on it for a six month. My speed of stitch was about 25 to 30 seconds per stitch. It gave me something to look forward every day. Although sometimes when my friends were visiting me and watching me be busy weaving, they were asking, how much do you think you're going to get for this? As if I'm making it for money. 
and the only answer they ever heard or they got, you can't afford it. No one can. This is for my daughter. No matter how long it takes, and no matter how difficult it be, I'm going to have to finish it. And I finally did. When I finished it, I learned something. I thought that when it comes to the art and the artist, time and money become meaningless. And the only thing that matters is the love, the passion, and the reasons that the artists they have for their own to weave or produce any kind of art. For the rest people of the people might be meaningless. For them, it makes sense. The same way that my daughter's carpet made sense for me, not, more five, not for my friends. Back in 97, I knew I couldn't give up this passion of mine. So I decided to stay. And start going back to the tribes and looking for carpets. It wasn't an easy decision. I knew I couldn't save carpet industry, but I might as well try to save it in the villages that my family was connected to. So me and a few of my friends came up with a strategy to help the carpet weaving industry in the villages by provide education and medical care at the villages. My role was to teach the buyers about the tribal carpets and their history through the hand-woven pieces of them and the stories that they had put in it. Stories like my daughter's carpet, Tree of Life, Every bit of that carpet had meant something for me and for my daughter. She had picked a design, a tree from her school yearbook and asked me to weave her. What I told her was that, okay, let's add to it some extra designs. And I made it into a tree of life, a family tree of the prophet himself. Therefore, I had to use a green color for the tree, the color of Islam. Then I wanted to tell my daughter, how much I love her. So, for the field of a carpet, I was using red. Red symbolizes love, passion, and warmth. At the same time, I wanted to tell her that she is the source of life for me. But, thank you. Now we have it here. As the, unfortunately, the picture doesn't make so much justice. The green is really an Islamic green. So the field is a red color to tell me how much, to tell her how much I love her. Then I made the arch part from the blue color. Blue symbolizes water. Water is a source of life. And I wanted to tell her that she is giving life to me and her mom by her coming. She's the God's greatest gift for us. The same way that the water gives a life to a dry land, her coming was that way for us. I designed some gold and a white colors in it. Wishes of me for her to have a great future. It symbolizes sun and a daylight. So wishes of me for her to have a great future and a bright life. Then I put some black color outlines all over. The black color outline symbolizes the difficulties and the problems in life that may occur. And me telling her there that she can get over with by the love of her family and her faith. And I can continue about this carpet, so we'll leave it there. Many other tribals also have their meanings. Here, since we have a designer and weaver of a piece, I can tell you the weaving of the carpet had meaning for us, the technique we put in, the size of the carpet, the type of stitch I used in it, the fabrics, everything, every detail of that tiny bitty piece had meaning for us. I just described a little bit of coloring in here. In the tribals, though, there are some very famous history and stories, such as Noah's Ark, 
a Garden of Eden, a hunting scene, tree of life. There are some animals that have symbolic meaning to them also. For example, we talked about horse for the Turkmen tribe. They are lions, symbol of power, peacock and deer, symbol of beauty, camel, symbol of patience. There are spiritual motif too, spirit protection, evil spirit protection, such as an evil eye, ram horn, a hand. They're all over the carpet. It's designed by the weavers to find out by us, inshallah. Now, these stories and the stories of a carpet, in other words, gave love, made the buyers more love to their, car to their carpets and appreciation to the tribes that the peace was coming from. Soon I found out that how many people would like to buy a Persian carpet like this room. And unfortunately, how little they get to know when they actually went to buy one. Let's ask that question again. How many of you know that there was a stories in the carpets that you owned? Or how many of you already know the story? Please, raise your hand. Two, that's not bad. One at least knows the story. That's really good, thank you. So, one out of a hundred or more hundred people, we're talking about knows the story. I wanted to change that in my customers. So, and I wanted to help village through. So, my plan was very simple. More education for the customers created more demand and love. And that lead to purchase. And a purchase means an income for the families that I'm aiming for. And the income gives them money for their kids' education, medical care, and any other thing that they need. So I started with my customers first and friends. Then I start thinking, what else can I do for them? I start giving, thinking and decided to give an, a public uh, seminars or lectures. I did it in, for the first time in Sadhu House in 99. Then I followed it to embassies, uh, schools, com private companies, in the last couple of years, I've added something new to the educational efforts, what I call hands-on loom. So we have a carpet weaving course held. The goal is to weave seven to 10,000 stitches per a period of, in four sessions in three months. About 90 people have joined and attended the course so far. And for your information, less than five have finished that number. Most of them, when they reached to the first few hundreds, came back to me and start complaining. Oh, Hussein, this is very difficult. Oh, Hussein, we get forget wh where to put the stitches, where to put the colors. And the only thing I was doing, I was just keep listening to them. And when I reached to the end, I was saying, okay, let me just describe you a carpet. Just ignore all of that and listen to me. They were saying, okay. Well, for example, this one, closest one to me, I was pointing at, and so I brought one here. I was pointing at and saying, well, this one is made by a, a single lady in a tribe, somewhere between Afghanistan and Iran, northeast Iran, I'm expecting, Turkmen tribe. She's rich, she's young, and she made it for the door cover, the design she uses in it. She has put some ram horns, snakes, evil eyes all over the carpet, protection motifs. This is the meaning of the symbols. On the other hand, she's putting here 70 to 80 stitches per square centimeter. This rug is two square meters. That equals to 1.5 million stitches in this rug. And I was expecting how many for my weavers? Seven to 10,000? This lady has put 
10 to 15,000 stitch a day. She's using memory. I'm giving them a blueprint, a loom, a tool. With all that, they came back to me and complaining. And that, I was already gone to, uh, got my point for them. I wanted my customers to get to the point to feel one day of that weavers, to get to see how difficult it is to weave these, appreciate them more. And it had happened. They had faced that difficulty. So I had the goal. Now was time to pass them that extra information about the carpet. So, I'm hoping the same way that these tribes and villages that we lived in in childhood helped me during those years, and a carpet business had helped me so far, surviving twice in my life, it's my time to pay back to them. And the ladies like her, unfortunately, the video is upside down, and it's taken two months ago from a, one of the weavers' mobile phone and sent to me. They were so excited about this that they're going to be told about, talked about. She is a second-generation weaver with us. She has gone to school and got married and had the job waiting for her. Now she has two beautiful kids, and she's weaving. And looking at her, for me, it makes me feel like I did part of what I owed them given back to. And if you feel that this culture and tribe and the, style, the carpets deserves to be protected and saved and preserved for the next generation, let's put hand together and try to help them. So we're going to have some pieces left for the next generation to enjoy a bit of it, inshallah. And thank you. <laughs>